Hey, 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 this is T.C. Allen. I am your host for the Good News Show. And listen, uh, we have a show for you today. Uh, it is family night, which means that we have families all over the world uh, that we're praying for. Uh, not only family night, but business night. I have my uh, good friend Mel Clemens and his dear wife, Stephanie Clemens, uh, who will be with us tonight because uh, I want to minister to families tonight. I want to talk about uh, business and family in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, a lot of our families are running businesses, running households, all at the same time. And how are they juggling these things uh, in the midst of the pandemic? Now listen, these two are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, they have a household full of uh, sons and they're absolutely uh, phenomenal. Basketball players, entrepreneurs themselves. And so uh, within the midst of everything that's going on, how are we balancing our families and our businesses? Are, are we closing our businesses? Are we holding on uh, uh, to what's going on? Uh, are, are we paying attention to the news? Are we getting depressed? Uh, what's going on in their minds and their heads and how are they dealing with this tragedy? And so I'm going to talk to them today. I don't want you going anywhere. I want you to tune in and share this feed, share this live stream, share this with someone, uh, because this 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 is going to be an epic show. Uh, Mel Clemens and Stephanie Clemens are uh, uh, a force to be reckoned with. And so I want you to get to know them and get to see them today. Uh, so stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. Kid old enough for money, but too young to deal with a checking account? Oh, and you don't really want to deal with cash? You need the Cube Kid Card. Reload right from your bank account, set parameters, and spend just like a normal debit card. If the card is lost, no problem. Without the app, the balance is zero. Get yours at cubemoney.io. Are you suffering from fear and anxiety? The Allen Counseling Clinic is here to help. Our goal is to help you grow from your struggles, heal from your pain, overcome your fears, and get the relief from your anxiety. Call now, area code 424-295-6227. Telehealth is now available. Hey, hey, Mel and Stephanie, how are you doing today? Good, Mr. Allen, how are you? Good, good, good. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. And uh, we, we are excited to have you on the show. And so here at The Good News, what we do is we get, bring people uh, some good news in the midst of all the bad news that we're dealing with every day. I started the show with my family uh, to combat all the, the, the terrible news that's going on in the world today. We want to bring them some good news, tips, tools, and resources, also encouraging word to them. And today I want to talk to you guys about business and family during this pandemic. I know you two are very busy uh, entrepreneurs and uh, educated, uh, and your family is, is a large family. And I know all of you are juggling things during this pandemic. But my first question uh, to you all is how are you doing uh, during these times? Good, good. I am. Um... I was listening to your words on your doing your introduction and the word to use these terrible times. People refer to them as tragic times, your trying times. But what you got to remember and what I always say to myself in the mornings is, you know what, this is a triumph. This is an opportunity for me to see what I can do better, see what I can do greater, see what I can do bigger. So for me, my glass is half filled. That's good. That's good. That's good. What about you, sir? It's a little different in trying for me because uh, I'm already semi-retired, so being at home makes it even worse. So have, I'm trying to stay motivated, trying to find your purpose, trying to find where I fit in. I'm not used to being at home 24 hours a day. So it's, it's really an adjustment and not nerve-wracking, but it's different. It's real different. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I want to be able to know you. Uh, please introduce yourself, uh, Stephanie, you first. And then Mel, uh, tell us a, a little history about yourselves and uh, uh, where, uh, uh, where do you come from and uh, what businesses and things like that. And, and how do you de derive uh, to a place of um, you know, entrepreneurship as well as having a, a, a successful family during this time? Uh, well, uh, again, Stephanie Clemens. Uh, I'm from a small town from South, in South Carolina, Lancaster, South Carolina, and um, I went to school in Lancaster, South Carolina as well. College, I graduated from Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina, so it's not so, so far from my parents uh, where I grew up, actually. Um, I got my start, of course, in the corporate world in wireless, and so I moved around a lot, um, ended up here in Georgia. I actually met my husband, Mel, in Tennessee. We work for the same organization, same company. And so um, when I met Mel, we talked about an entrepreneurial opportunity that he had experienced um, earlier. And then once we got married, he communicated to me that, hey, I'm gonna do this again. And so I always knew that my husband had an entrepreneurial spirit. I knew where he came from. Um, same with me, my dad, he's always had a vision of, of, of being um, independent, independent with income and financially fit. And so he's always had a spirit of entrepreneurship as well. So both of us come from environments where that was often talked about, where we often saw our parents experience and do things outside of um, corporate or your traditional nine to five jobs. So we've all, both of us, I have to speak for him as well, that's in our blood. So of course we, we've evolved to where we wanted to own businesses. So we put a vision in place. And when you put visions in place, of course, there are some sacrifices. There are a lot of sacrifices uh, that we have to make personally, professionally, financially, um, emotionally, because you ha it's, it's blood, sweat, and tears. But at the end of the day, you know, your vision, it's all about your vision, making sure you stay, you know, your faith is strong. And we work with each other on that. I think I'm fortunate and blessed enough to have a spouse who who gets me, who understands me, and things that I just didn't know think that he teaches me. And the same with him. You know, we often talk about how going through even times like this, that we get a chance to uh, build rapport on a different level or a different topic or understanding that neither one of us have had the opportunity to be in. But through just uh, you know research and me being able to talk to other people and have my circle and same with him, we can exchange. And I think that's where it's most important that we have the vision, the dialogue, and the exchange where we continue to support. And so with that, our businesses that we've done, and Mel get more into the businesses because again, it's um, vision a vision that starts out and then it evolves. And we talk about you know what is that going to look like once it evolves? One year, two year, five years, ten years. Um, we have a real estate and property management business. Um, he, we have the brokering business, but also with entrepreneurship, we started an insurance. And my husband, like I said, he, that was something that he brought to me years ago. And when he put his mind to doing something, it's pretty much a done deal. And he makes it look easy, of course. I tell him that all the time. But it's helped me understand, too, how his, his mind works, you know, how he's wired. So with that understanding, it's easy for me to support. And not that I always agree, but I always support. And there are times you know, when we might debate or have a discussion, but at the same time, it's all about the level of support and the vision and keeping our eye on the prize. So, so that's the makings of a power couple, is what you're saying. <laughs> a powerful, <laughs> powerful couple, absolutely. So Mel, how, how how did you uh, how did you meet your wife and how did you come about uh, being she she shared a little bit but share who you are and uh, how do you come about uh, where you are now? Uh, we met at work at AT and T, which was Bell South at the time. Uh, one of the guys uh, that worked with both of us wanted us to meet. And also before I start, I'm from Tennessee, as you can see. I got a brother, best friend that's in the hospital, Daryl Fuquay. He's battling for his life, so everybody out there can say a prayer for my brother Daryl Fuquay. He's in UT Hospital, so uh, he's trying to get through these sickness. So I want to make sure everybody says a prayer and keep him encouraged and keep prayers up for Daryl. Uh, but we met at work back in the 90s, I guess, 2000. 
and uh, we met at Bell South, and we connected. And I, sh I saw something to her that I felt that was important for me to connect with, and we connected. And I'm from Harriman, Tennessee, and uh, she was working in Knoxville at the time. And we started building a friendship and building a relationship. And at the same time, her job transferred her to uh, Atlanta, so we had to make a decision. And we tried to. We started out doing a, a long-term, long-distance relationship for a while, but. That really wasn't a call and then we got engaged and I moved to Atlanta also and got into corporate sales. That answers your question. That's good. That's good. And so uh she made you move to Atlanta. That's what that's what you're saying? That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I married up. People think she married up, I always tell people. Right, I right, her, right. I was in a little two bedroom apartment. She had a big old house, two or three cars. I was a little country boy, I ain't never seen nothing like that. And uh, so I tell people all the time that uh I married up, married in, married into a good thing. That's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, when when a when a man finds a wife, he finds a good he finds a good thing. Be <laughs> passing. So so with with everything that's going on, um, and I know you guys are very busy. Like you said, businesses and family. Um, How is your family, uh, your children, handling this time uh, going through this pandemic right now? It's a it's a dilemma, you know. It's it's luckily uh, one of my other sons is here to kind of keep them active. He uh, gets to play with them because colleges are shut down, so he keeps them in the fitness. He keeps them doing uh, the things that I don't do on a normal day basis. He he's a weightlifter, so he has them in the gym weightlifting. He plays chess, so he gets playing chess. You ain't you ain't so you ain't go you ain't gonna ride past that. You said the things that you don't do every day. I want I want you to stick right there <laughs> every week. <laughs> so. Uh, that gives them a balancing act, so they, they have fun uh, with each other. And the good thing about all my sons and uh, us, we love being together. So this is like a vacation for us. You know, everybody doesn't love and enjoy being with the other person. Some people work good together. Some people love each other, but some people don't like being around each other. Fortunately, my kids and my wife and all my boys love hanging out with each other. That's that's their best friend, so it makes it good. But, you know, it's a adjustment for my baby boy not to be able to see He's 10. He wants to go out and play with his 10 year olds in the park, ride right, bikes. Right. Do it's, it's a challenge for him. Right. But 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 uh, to see you and I, I commend you, sir, because I watch you uh, often because I love to see how fathers uh, take care of their children. And so you spend a lot of time with your boys. And I, I love that. And um, uh, that's one thing that I, you know, uh, I long to do to spend uh, as much time as possible uh, with my children doing nothing but paying attention to what they want, want to do in life and so I see you on the court all the time with your boys and things like that and that's something that um, I, I want to promote more of that because we need more fathers uh, uh, spending time with their children and, and raising our boys young men uh, to be men and, and not just leave them alone to themselves uh, to do whatever and so I commend you on that and so, uh, Stephanie, how, how, I'm sorry, go ahead. I said we're kind of in a different situation financially and with businesses. We are able to spend some time that a lot of dads and a lot of parents would love to be able to just spend four or five hours a day at the gym or at the band practice or at the track with their kids. But you have other responsibilities. I teach people and also tell people that financial resources that make you happy, it gives you a lot of options. Right. So with the option we choose to invest in our kids. Since I financially did well at an early age, I can spend all day long. My wife can spend all day long just focusing on the kids and doing things like that. So we enjoy that. And that, that's good. Now, 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 Stephanie, how, how do you enjoy watching him spend time with the, with the children and not having to uh, uh, split his time with anything else? Well, let's see. That's a loaded question because you say split time. Remember I mean, I mean, not, not just not just with the kids, but he he can spend time with his family. I'm sorry. Let me, let me just put it that way. <laughs> I think I have to commend him, which I told him this before. I think he's done a great job as far as being able to balance that, because like you said, Mel, he, he's not that one to you know, sit home 24 seven and you know, do that. But he finds um, the interest and the fun in doing things like, for example, when he talked about chess playing. Well, Mel is really good in chess playing. So, you know, he taught all the boys how to play chess. And so they'll have healthy competitions. I like to see that. I like to see 
like Caden, Caden, my 10 year old, Caden is not, that's not the first thing he's gonna go to is chess. However, he is really good in chess. You know, that's, that's a teachable moment where Mel, he's teaching him about strategy. And for Caden, you know, it becomes fun, but also he can hopefully one day implement those types of strategic um, measure, measures that Mel has taught him by use by playing chess. You know, with uh, Chase and basketball, my 15 year old, uh, that is my basketball star. And if you didn't know, Mel is a, Mel is a form basketball star. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I've never yeah. heard that yet. Yeah. Please, please share how Mel was a former. You said former basketball star. Is that I what mean, you said? In his other life, like he oh. Mel in his mind is an NBA player. <laughs> <laughs> He's an NBA player, but I love that about him because, um, you know, our foundation, we have the Superheroes Foundation. We always say, you know, my husband, ever since the first day I met him, he said, oh, I'm a superhero. I don't even think he introduced himself as Mayor Clemens. I'm a superhero. But uh, with that, he takes he takes the impossible and makes it possible. So when he's spending time with our boys, it brings me joy because, as you mentioned before, there are a lot of fathers, there are a lot of parents in general who just don't have the time or the resources to be able to do that. So I have to say, we don't take it for granted. I don't take that for granted because it could be a, it could be the different extreme on the other side. It could be another extreme where, you know, he doesn't have that opportunity, but it brings me a great, great joy to see him be able to spend time with Mel and Chase and Caden. And we have older boys too, who have their families out of state. And so, you know, they get to FaceTime and they get to pass jokes around and old pictures around and, like I said, it just brings me a lot of joy. In fact, that's one of the things that um, I tell him all the time that, you know, I just fall in love with him over and over again because I've never seen somebody that's so passionate about pouring into their own children. I mean, that's that may good. sound different, but, you know, we both have lovable parents and our parents did the same thing, but I get to witness that because, you know, I saw what my dad did with my brother and he said, say, he says, you know, with his, his siblings and his, his father, but to actually witness it firsthand, it's a, it's it's different. It gives me a different feel and appreciation. I I I you know I commend you guys because we don't see that much in our African American families, and so uh, to watch you guys be able to spend not only time together but time with your children is absolute awesome. But Stephanie, um, how are you balancing the household? Uh, you have a husband who is very busy, have several businesses. And then you have children who are very busy also as well. How are you balancing the household during this time? What, what tips and tools that you can give other wives and mothers during this time to help them balance the household during the tragedy? That's a good question. And I, I think to myself, I'm certainly not the expert. You know, uh, I have to definitely speak on the dynamic of our home. Uh, we've always operated better on routine. Um, that's one of the first things that we've always incorporated into our household, even when circumstances change, such as this. This is a good example. Um, one of the things that you have to realize is that before this pandemic took place, my kids were in school between the times of 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. So during that time, you know, like you said, Mel's working, I'm working, you know, making sure I get home, do, you know, do cooking and making sure homework is done. Those things that mom, you know, other things we have to do as well, but that's just, that's just like a, a little bit of it. But as far as me balancing, routine keeps me in balance. Um, that routine includes everything from waking up early in the morning and making sure the kids are getting their school work done. And, um, you know, because I've become, I can add homeschool teacher to my resume now. But of course, I have a, a vast appreciation for those teachers, the educators who are out there doing what they normally do. Me, well, me I too. Me, well, me too, because I, I'm sitting here trying to do uh, uh, fifth grade, tenth grade homework, and uh, I can't remember, you know, uh, how I did it back then. I, I'm trying. I'm, I'm teaching them how to do it today, and you they they go to they go back to school. They go back to school, do it my way, and it's wrong. <laughs> you know what I tell this story? The biggest thing is Stephanie has found the light in the, in the being a homeschool teacher and going through all that. She'd always talked about it in the past. And I said, you're not kind of built like that. <laughs> so, you know, some people you think they're built to stay home. She was already in corporate America, running divisions, director of a company. When she was at, at, at AT&T, you know, she had a power job. So I never saw her as somebody staying at home, but I 
gotten a lot of fun seeing her, especially with my 10-year-old with Deuce, okay? She teaches him math, they mess up projects. And even my 15-year-old, they just do projects all the time, and she's done an excellent job. And we actually had a conversation. And I think this is going to come up in a lot of households. She's thinking about homeschooling the boys next year. because She found so much delight, and the boys are learning. And, I mean, I mean to, to be absolutely honest with you, uh, um, spending, spending time with my youngest son, he's conquering autism. And uh, in school, they give him certain, certain work and work with him on certain things uh, throughout the week. And here at home, I give him the work they send me for the week, and he's finished with it in the day because he's here at home with me, and I help him with it. And then we go on something that's, that's challenging to him. And so... I'm pretty sure uh, that having your, your kids with you uh, can pour more into them than a teacher who has uh, 40 students at one time. Yeah, the yeah. biggest thing that I noticed, me and my wife talked about, like after the first two days of school being out, I knew my household was not in order. So I sat down with my wife and I said, first of all, we're gonna get on the schedule. Because I realized they were staying up late, getting up late, I said, "My, yeah. we don't operate that way. Structure is good for everybody especially kids so like after the first day i didn't make it as hard as it was when they were uh in school like going to bed at eight or nine i said look we got to be in bed by 10 o'clock for the young ones sleep by 11. And i need you up by 9 10 at the latest you didn't have to get up at seven but that structure they adjusted quickly but if you have kids that don't have that structure running around getting up late and now we need to structure eating time well, i'm about to go broke with all these eating eat seven meals <laughs> That's another, that's another part of the balance. Right, and right. We were hungry, and we're out be cooking once a day because it was dinner. We were home for dinner and making prep work for the next day for dinner or lunch or whatever that looked like. Now I got everybody hungry at different times because their lunch times at school were different. Right. And so, you know, if I start in the kitchen at 9 o'clock, I'm cleaning my kitchen at 9 p.m. I'm, I'm 12 hours into the, into working in the kitchen, and that's, that's nothing... That leaves me for very less or very little for me. So we talk about the balancing, and that's one of the things that I don't think you really ever find a way to balance. I think working at balancing right. uh, gives you a bit more energy, gives you a bit more power to do that, and it gives you a bit more passion to, to make sure that you're finding some way to do some type of balance and act. So again, for me, I meditate. Um, that's, that's one good. of the most important things that I've, uh, and I've always meditated, but not as much as I've meditated over the past five weeks i've been more intentional about the time so you know um two years ago we had a closet in the house and i transformed that closet into my war room my prayer room and that is my time um i'm blessed enough where i have my husband and my kids they know that if the light is on in that room that mom is not to be disturbed and it is um you know that is my space so i find myself meditating a lot i pray a lot i'm able to connect with um people who that don't have the opportunity to have a support system and be able to pray with them and be able to pray for them and that's what gives me a lot of my peace that's where that's a lot good. of my peace comes from, that i'm able to do that and again you know i think the, uh, one of the benefits that i have is that i have a husband a, a partner that not only with the financial resources that we're able to align there, but we align on so many different levels as well. Now, like I say, we don't always agree. However, I make it a point to understand him and he makes the point to understand me and we make it work. And, you know, once if he sees that I'm out of balance and sometimes I don't see that, then, you know, he's smart enough to say, hey, what's going on? Let's, let's get this right. And I but love I that because he yeah. see back into shape. But I, I know uh, you, you said you have a war room and uh, I, I know you go in that war room and go to war. And uh, when you come out, he acts right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, yeah, I tell people, I mean, I, when I go, I'm going in for battle. I'm going in for battle. And I spend I've spent hours in there before. But, you know, the meditation, the peace that allows me to be able to hear God's word and to be able to operate efficiently from an emotional and spiritually perspective. I, I believe that this is a time uh, for all of us to have a war room, a prayer room, uh, to get on the knees before God and to petition his throne and to get answers and to get clarity, to get peace, to get, uh, uh, you know, our, our help that we need mentally, emotionally. 
financially. And so to have a war room is much needed right now. I, I think a lot, a lot more people are praying right now than ever before. <laughs> so I agree. I yeah. totally agree yeah. with that. I, I've noticed a lot of that too. And I think a lot of things that I would, if I could touch more people is, you know, the staying encouraged and staying motivated and finding out, you know, what your purpose is, or if you don't know your purpose, take time. Like right now, people don't understand. And I'm kind of spoiled because I'm not in the same space I was 15 years ago or 10 years ago, even five years ago. But if you gave me this much free time to focus on something new, I would have, I would have created so many more businesses, so many more opportunities. And a friend of mine, Yvonne Bowen, said the other day that when you're not walking in your purpose, you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting the other people that you should have been blessed, that should have been working with you, working for you, being blessed by your other, your other opportunities. So sometimes you got to realize that you got to walk in your purpose to help other people. And right now we have more time in the history of the United States to write a book, read a book, create a movie, create a business, encourage somebody, pray for somebody. We have most 90% of the country is working at home. And if you're not doing nothing productive, you don't want it. That's now, right. Some of us, if I don't work again, I'm pretty good. But if you try to make some money and make an opportunity for your family, you better be getting it. If you ain't getting it, you won't want it. You don't, you don't want it. You don't want it at all. And so listen, I want to stay right there because when we come back, we're going to talk about business. We talk about family, but we're going to talk about business because not only do you have a successful family, but you have successful businesses. And I want to know how your business is, is going through uh, this trying time, uh, this pandemic right now, and what decisions you have to make uh, for your businesses and your employees during this time. So stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Listen, guys, we have uh, Mel and uh, Stephanie Clemens, who are dear friends of mine, and I absolutely love them. They, they are a, a power couple here in Atlanta, Georgia. And so they're going to be uh, going over uh, how to balance business and family in our next session. Don't go nowhere. Stay right there. Uh, we have some more to share with you uh, to help you move through this pandemic. Stay with us. Are you suffering from fear and anxiety? The Allen Counseling Clinic is here to help. Our goal is to help you grow from your struggles, heal from your pain, overcome your fears, and get the relief from your anxiety. Call now, area code 424-295-6227. Telehealth is now available. Stars, but I'm gonna make it stars for Jesus. You want them to be the Jackson Five? No, they better than the Jackson Five. You gonna sing for the Lord, you gonna lay down for the devil. Hallelujah, you didn't just sell the songs, you sold your future. You sold your sister's future. All we ever did was what you wanted us to do. Did you ever ask us what we wanted? Right, ladies, it's your time. She's got to be ready. You got to be perfect. Our album is number 20 on the chart. You've been nominated for Best Soul Gospel Performer. These are Clark Sisters. Grammy nominations and number one album. You came, you came my That's how it's done. Like cash envelope budgeting? Then you're going to love Cube. Cube is a one-of-a-kind app card combo that unites banking and budgeting. Here's how it works. First, you split your paycheck into cubes. Cubes are like piggy banks with purpose. Basically, you're giving every dollar a job. When you're at the store or online and ready to make a purchase, simply choose which cube the money is coming from and ensure you have enough. There are no overdrafts. You've got $1,000 allocated for groceries. Your cart rings up for $250. The cube card has a default zero balance. This prevents theft and any unplanned purchases. 
You select your grocery cube, which then automatically transfers your available funds to your cube card. Now run the card. $250 is removed from that cube. The remaining $750 is returned back to the cube as available funds. Bingo! You're done! Easy! Oh, and if you've shared the cube, your people will get a notification, so everyone's on the same page. Every purchase you make with Cube is tracked, so you can see your purchase history for each Cube category. Easy peasy. Download today and start spending with purpose. Cube. Sam Consulting is a company that helps people buy and sell insurance agencies. When people want to change careers and get into a new industry, they call me to find an insurance agency to buy. When people want to retire and get out of the insurance agency, they call me to help them liquidate their assets or sell. Some people call me a broker. I'm more of an intermediary. I'm kind of like between a buyer and a seller. I make it fair for both parties. The primary reason somebody would leverage Sam Consulting is because we create millionaires. We help people retire from the business and retire wealthy, or we help people get into the business and grow to be wealthy. The reason I use Sam Consulting is the reputation, professionalism, the expertise, and the amazing job of doing the due diligence is what convinced me to work with Sam Consulting. Owning an insurance agency is one of the biggest kept secrets. It's generational cash flow coming in every month. This is what I do. I create millionaires by walking through the process step by step on how to own their own business. The best way to reach me is go to samconsulting.com or you can simply call the office 678-223-7397. And we're back. Thank you guys for hanging with us. And listen, we're talking to uh, Mel and Stephanie Clemens uh, today, uh, talking about family and business during this pandemic. And how do you balance being an entrepreneur and having a family during this time? And so uh, they are two po uh, power couples. Uh, they are a power couple uh, in uh, Atlanta, uh, Georgia here. And so they have some tips, tools, and uh, principles to give us uh, to balance things out during this time. Don't, I, I don't want you to be scared. I don't want you to be fearful. I don't want you to be worried. I don't want you to be depressed during this time. I want you to uh, know that God is with you. Not only God is with you, uh, but you also have some friends, family, and loved ones who are praying for you. And you have some people out there who can share some things with you so you can make it through this pandemic. And so I have uh, uh, Mel and Stephanie here uh, that's going to share some things with us uh, about their business, concerning their business and how uh, they had to make some decisions during this time uh, and, and to make things work, to make things uh, gel together, to make things flow uh, during this time. Because not only are you going through, but there's others going through too as well. So listen, don't go nowhere, share this feed. And I, I want to make some room here uh, for questions and comments during this time. If you have any questions or comments uh, for Mel and Stephanie, please uh, type out, uh, type it out in our Facebook chat right now. And I'm going to try to get to all the questions. I can't get to everybody's question, but I'm trying to get to all the questions uh, today. And uh, uh, so they can give you some tips, tools, and encouraging word uh, as we move through the show. Hey, guys. Thank you for hanging with us. And th thank you also, again, for being on the show. And so uh, when we left off, we were talking about uh, if you're not doing something during this time, especially writing a book, encouraging people uh, and, and creating things. I, I say all the time, uh, I don't mind is the devil workshop. And so uh, you got to be busy during this time. Some people are depressed, but if they get busy and start start going after their purpose and doing what God has purposed them to do, I'm pretty sure they'll find themselves uh, uh, walking out and walking through uh, this pandemic. So how are you guys juggling business during this time? Uh, it's really a, 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 kind of like a seesaw right now. In 2019, a lot of our businesses took off. And I think when you walk in God's footsteps and you have vision and you receive it, you'll realize things happen for a reason. So I, in 2019, I was put in a position where 2020, whether it was bad or it was good, I would be able to adjust accordingly. So people have to realize when you have a good year, when you have a good month, that's not the time to go out and fly to Hawaii, fly to Jamaica. Now it's good to be able to participate in those activities, but you also have to have a storehouse. You have to have what we, what we call savings. Somebody sent me 
a picture of what the average African American or U.S. American savings was. It was crazy. But that's because we don't make the sacrifices. We got to make some sacrifices. Right now, we're forced. But some of us made sacrifices before we were forced and we're in different positions. So right now, you're forced to make a sacrifice. You're forced not to go on summer vacation. You're forced not to go out to dinner. You're forced not to spend your only $50 on the movie tickets. You're forced not to buy a bunch of stuff for Christmas because we don't have it. But if we start getting into a mentality where we can make those sacrifices on our own and be disciplined, we'll be in a different position. So right now I'm working on that. Some of those things I did good at, some of them I have to work on. The biggest thing I'm trying not to do is, is be the king of Netflix videos. Like 100, 150% of the world. We watch every Netflix movie in the history of Netflix. Doc, you got to catch up on your Netflix videos because you know if you don't, somebody go, somebody go say you got to watch this, you got to watch that. You know, you, you got to sit there for at least five hours and, and, and binge watch at least five hours. <laughs> you said oh, only five? You take a break. <laughs> you better catch up with us. But it, it's, it's okay for that relaxation time. But I would really encourage the mothers, the sons, the kids, whatever your passion is, put down the remote. And like I need to do, put down the donut and focus. Find your passion or experiment on different passions. Write a book, set a plan, everything that you ever want to accomplish in life. Now is the time. If you want to be a basketball player, you want to be an insurance agent, you want to be a coach, you have time to study every grade. My basketball team that I'm a part of, every week I have coaches from the NBA, coaches from college, sports agents on the call, pouring into kids. Everybody that you want to touch right now is sitting at home. Robert De Niro sitting at home. He ain't doing nothing. Anybody you want to touch is at home right now, right. sitting on the couch with love to encourage and teach other people if you can reach out to them. Denzel Washington is sitting at home right now doing nothing. Right. If I wanted to be an actor, I would be touching these people. I would find these connections. It's common sense. Everybody in the world is home. <laughs> right, right, right. And that that's 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 how I got you. Uh, on the line right now because you home. Usually when I call you, you busy. <laughs> can't go to the gym. Can't go into the office. Right, right, right. You can't. Watch what, this, Mel. You can't half me no more. <laughs> but guys, uh, when when it comes to your business, what decision did you have to make uh, during this time? We talked about sacrifice, and we understand that we have to sacrifice in, in business. Because if you're in business, anybody in business knows you have to sacrifice and, and, and stack and save and, and do some things differently, especially especially those who, who came from nothing and now we have a little something. We know how to make things stretch. We, we know how to make things work. Uh, but what decision do you have to make during this time for your businesses? I, I know you have several businesses and uh, we're not gonna go through all of them all of them, <laughs> but I know I know you have some business. So tell tell us what you have to do, uh, decision you have to make uh, for your business to do this time. The biggest the biggest uh, issues or problems I've had, you know, the hospitality and restaurant business. We really didn't have a choice. No one is traveling. No one is able, was able to go to restaurants. It really wasn't safe, even if politicians say it's safe. It's not safe. So some of those businesses we had to furlough people or lay people off, and that you know that was a tough. That tough decision. Tough. That was tough. Yeah. So we we both fought with that. Now some of my other companies that can sustain working remotely that are considered essential, I had to look at some of those businesses and say, okay, do I lay these people off because I'm not making enough money based on my business plan, or do I take a sacrifice? Some of them took a sacrifice. I can sacrifice when some of my employees are not in a position, even though they can get unemployment, it's still not the same. So some of the businesses, for some of the people that have been with me 10, 15 years, I'm sacrificing. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I, I, I commend you on your sacrifice because a lot of companies are making some tough decisions, hard decisions during this time. And it, it's, it's out of their hands, especially the hospitality uh, uh, business. I, I know you just opened up a restaurant in Chicago uh, that I have, have yet to visit yet. And so, I mean, even during this time in the hospitality space, restaurant space, we know things are closing down uh, and and here's here's one thing because you have a restaurant here in Georgia. Uh, our uh, governor, uh, God bless him, has just made a decision uh, to open up uh, Georgia uh, to several different um, <laughs> uh, businesses. And so, uh, within the next couple of weeks, within the next week or so, 
uh, things will be back open up here. And how do you feel about that? Even though you are a business owner and you have to lay people off and 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 you're 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 hurting on one side, uh, but you're trying to uh, make sacrifices on the other side. How do you deal with do I go back uh, to the office? Do I open up the business again and put people's life in danger or do I scale back and make a different decision? Uh, for the betterment of the people. Those uh, to some people are tough decisions, and it's easy for me to comment. If I if my lights are still on and I'm able to eat every day, it's easy for me to say, "Hey, we can't open up." But if my brother or my sister couldn't eat because that business was shut down, why well, know for another two weeks that my babies wouldn't get milk? That's a tougher decision. For me, I don't think uh, now is the time to open. But I'm not making a decision for 100,000 Georgians, 100,000 Americans, and it's tough. I think I don't think it's safe. So I put life over business, not any day of the week. But some people now I don't know whose heart is in what place. Some people have their heart in the right place and thinking it's helping by opening up business. Now some people are being greedy and say, "Hey, we just need to get this money." So it's, it depends on where the heart is. So I don't know who where everybody's heart is, but me, it's not safe. I shut down. Some of my activities way before the state of Georgia, way before like the basketball, I got in some disagreements on some of the basketball community because I told them, if the NBA ain't playing, I ain't playing. Why am I gonna have my kids in the gym practicing when it's not safe? And I think until they have a testing system or a treatment or a cure, it's gonna be a long time before we touch and be in the same place. It's just, it's just not logical to have 100 people in a restaurant. And I, and I hate to admit it, if we don't open up, some of these businesses are not coming back. And that's what the governor knows. And that's what the president knows. They know some of these businesses are not coming back regardless. And, 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 and unfortunately, that, unfortunately that, that's true. Some businesses are, are not coming back because they took a big hit. Because most businesses are, are living what we call uh, paycheck to paycheck. They're living from week to week. Uh, per se. And so uh, those who are, are, are who are we're strong in, in, in business, they may last a little bit longer. But however, uh, sir, I commend you on putting lives over money. And uh, there's there's like you said, there's many people out there uh, that's struggling right now. And so they making a hard decision. Uh, and so that they don't take it lightly. I do understand. But there are some people out there that's putting money over lives. And so I commend you in putting the lives uh, before money. Well, I challenge all of us who have those businesses that are failing or have a job that is laid off to recreate yourself, to take 10 minutes, reach out to somebody. You've got to recreate yourself because the way we operate, even when it opens up, is going to be different than when we operated before. The world has changed with this coronavirus, with whether the ailments, it's a different environment. So you're going to have to recreate your business, change your business model, but you can't be depressed. You can't blame such and such. You can't blame the guy next door. It's on you. If my family don't, I can't go to my kids and say, well, the governor did this. The president said this. That ain't going to feed my family. I'm going to come up with a plan. My brother Roy told me you can put us in the middle of the desert with a, with a toothpick. We're going to make it happen. And that's we'll how people got to decide. You got to make it happen. Going to make it happen. Don't go home telling your wife no excuses. Come up with a plan. Reach out to somebody who can help you. Network right now. You could if you call people, tell them you want to work for free. They'll take it. People need help in some of these businesses and opportunities. That's right. That's right. And I I I believe, sir, um, that people need uh, to hear that. And so, what ways can they be creative during this time? Because uh, like like right now, I'm doing a lot of interviews, encouraging people, and teaching and coaching things like that. Right right through a video. And so um, there's a lot of companies out there that's that's behind the times. Uh, they don't have the technology. They don't have the things uh, in place. And so uh, there are some things that can be done differently within their businesses. And so how can they really structure things differently? Because things are not going to go back to the same. It's going to be totally different. And so what ways are you structuring things? What ways are you positioning your businesses to come back and come back strong, but come back on a cutting edge of what's going on right now? Some of the things I'm looking at is what how can I restructure, re reallocate my resources? Right now, we know we're doing face to face, but a lot of my business is not going to be face to face at all. Like a lot of the restaurants now are going to be pick up and delivery. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm in a different position because I can look at businesses unemotionally and make an unemotional decision. So I can say this business is not working, that business does. But what's going to come out of this time is creativity. Out of desperation, out of heartache comes creativity. It's going to be somebody whose business is on the line, whose financial wherewithal is on the line. They're going to have to come up with a plan. Me, I can actually pick and choose some of the businesses that I think are not profitable, and I say 2020 or 2021 are not the best business going forward, not to recreate them. For the restaurant and the hospitality business, we got to have a hard look down. We got to have a hard sit down and say, hey, what happens if it comes, the virus comes back like they're saying in six months? We have to be better prepared. So some of us are going to be online order. Some of us are going to be more delivery services. My buddy Michael Lane, who just passed, if people who know me, was a close person that was really deep into hospitality. I'm just an investor in a lot of these businesses. I don't actively have to run them. I have input, but I don't actively run them. But he was actively involved. So I want to see some of the great restaurant people, what they, what are they going to do and what would they do? So I'm anxious to watch because I'm, I'm still learning about this hospitality business. That's good. That's good. I, I You know, uh, being a student of uh, what you're into to make it better, it, you can't make things better if you're not a student at it and to uh, learn from others and to uh, glean from others uh, to make things stronger and better in this this next season because from 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 now to next year uh, things are going to change and change rapidly and so we got to be on top of things and not just uh, binging binging on uh, Netflix all day long uh, but we have to be strategic in in, in what we're going to do uh, next and so listen guys uh, yeah before you move on to it I'm a big investor in Netflix I still want them to binge. <laughs> Keep binging Keep a little binge. bit. Let's not get this twisted. Hey. Keep binging. No, I, I'm not. I'm not saying don't binge, but you you got it. I I'll put it. I'll put you this way. I, I love watching. I, I love watching TV with my wife. We we sit and we work, and or or I sit and watch TV and she work. Uh, you know, vice versa. Uh, and, and we're sitting there watching TV, and that that's our time. And so we yeah. catch up on our shows and, and, and things of that nature. And so, you know, we watch a lot of, uh, you know, family feud and things like that. Uh, and, but, but that's our time together. But just doing that alone causes a problem because things are not getting done. Even though we're doing work at the same time while we're watching TV or TV watching us, a lot of people are just spending all their time just on on television. I, I know you invest, sir, but uh, there's some people out there that need to write a book. There's some people out there uh, that need to create content for Netflix. Amen. Case in point, this this show. I'm 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 working some things out and getting getting some sponsors and things of that nature uh, to be on several different stations and creating more content and for more shows, and so I can get. Uh, a deal with Tyler Perry, get, get a deal with certain people. I'm not just sitting here just doing nothing, but I'm creating content. So when I look at, at Netflix, I'm going to see myself <laughs> and I, and or, I, or I, see something I created. Absolutely. No. It's a great time to do that. I mean, you have all the time in the world. If your imagination just flow, let it flow, collect your thoughts, put it down on paper. There's nothing. No, you don't have to worry about somebody checking for grammar mistakes. This is you, this is your time. And if you don't take advantage of this time right now, you're missing it, you're really missing it. I, I, I tell everybody, anybody I have a chance or opportunity to talk to a coach or mentor, you know, my thing is that you don't wanna come out of this thing less than. You wanna come out of this greater. In fact, I told my husband at the beginning of, of 2020 that my philosophy and my mantra for 2020 is bigger. And good. whatever that looks like, you know, um, if it's in size, okay, that's just more of you to be created. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mel. Wait, 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 wait. She didn't mean you. She didn't mean you. No, she didn't mean you. <laughs> no, I mean you know, I, for me, every year, Mel, 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 and myself and our children, we sit down and we do a plan. We do our plan and objectives for the year ahead. And so, you know, one of the things or some of the things on my list is that, you know, I want to teach my children how to cook a, a meal. I want That's them good. to be able to, I mean, my boys, they know how to pretty much take care of themselves, but you know, do you, I want you to cook a meal, something that you can be proud of, or better yet, you know, we rotate in the home, in the house, you know, we might have a Kool-Aid challenge, we might have a cook-off, we might have a chicken wing challenge, but just something to kind of get the creative juices flowing. Now, now, now Stephanie, I'm gonna stop you right there. 
Um, what does Mel cook? Oh, Mel can cook. Now, wait a minute. That's a loaded question because <laughs> Mel does not cook. But if I was to leave and come back, he would have gotten fed. The boys would have, would have gotten fed. He can cook. There are a lot of things that Mel taught me how to cook that I didn't know how to cook. All, all right. Cook. All right, Mel, you get you get one point for the night. Just one. He can cook. But I'm telling you, once, once uh, you know, once I, but I love, I love cooking. I love spoiling all of my men. I do. That's, that's one thing that I certainly enjoy. But uh, as far as getting back to what we were talking about being creative, I mean, this opportunity right here, you, it's, I always say God has given us a chance to reset. He gives right. us a reason. You know, he's like, okay, you might not have gotten, you might not have gotten my, my uh, indicators the first time. You know, I did this, and I, you know, there are hurricanes here, there are fires here, there are tornadoes here. Well, let's do this. Let me introduce you to Corona. Yeah. When, when, when was the last time God had everybody in the house at the same time uh, praying and paying attention to Him? So, <laughs> right. This, this is the time. I think something good for people to do right now and myself, what I need to probably start doing is write down what you get done each day. And if all you got is TV, eating donuts, eating french fries, reevaluate, spend your time wisely, reinvent yourself, and just spend time and best. Now, like me, I'm invested in my wife and I'm invested in my kids. And I, I was hoping to invest with my, uh, my AC and J's kids, my grand, my granddaughters, but I wasn't able to do that because of the pandemic. pandemic. But that's where I'm reallocating business is not really on the forefront of my mind is anybody who follows me on social media very seldom do you see anything i'm posting about any business i'm doing any business meeting i'm investing in them so i invested in business 20 years ago so now i can invest in them for the next 80 years that's powerful well well i i want to not only give people um the family side the business side but I also want you to give them a word of encouragement. I was watching a video uh, earlier today of you um, during the encouragement word, and you were talking about, um, you know, something. I, I got the video right here. Let me, let me get the video right here and uh, play that video. We'll be right back. A test that is no testimony. That means you have to go through something. Me, every opportunity that I ever succeeded from is because I failed. You want to go to the next level. You want all the accolades that come with hard work, but it takes the hard work to get there. You have to be willing to dig deep, reach down, and turn that switch when nobody else will. They say the faster you fail, the quicker you can succeed. I've made mistakes, but through those mistakes, the trial and error, and the test, you get the knowledge. You practicing every morning. You getting up early in the morning. You staying late. You eating right. You focusing on your goals. Me. Every opportunity that I ever succeeded from is because I failed. You cannot take a day off. You cannot take a vacation. It's not the half person that gets there. You gotta be all in every day, 24 hours a day. Now you say you want it, but can you look me in the eye, man to man, woman to woman, and say, hey, you want it worse than me? That's what I teach. I teach those impossibilities. I teach you to never give up. I teach you how to take those bad incidents, turn them around, recreate them, and learn. Successful people already think like this. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Do you believe it? Do you have that in you? That you can turn that switch and motivate yourself and dig deep and rise? That was powerful, sir. That was powerful. Dig I, I deep. Felt and rise dig deep and rise i like that don't quit we're not quitting we're not quitters and so uh mel and stephanie i want you to give a word of encouragement to the people who's balancing family and business at the same time during this pandemic well i'll start like um you know i was thinking when you asked the question about balance you know we like you said we do have a lot to juggle and what i it, like again that's just for the, dyna the dynamic of our family within these four walls, but everybody has a lot to juggle. Um, you know, I look at family, I look at my faith, I look at the fun, but I also pay attention to the facts. So, you know, if I take my family, I gotta continue to pray over my family. More so I gotta pray over my husband because he is the head of this household and I need to make sure 
that he is he, he's 100 percent armored with what he has every day because you know although i say he makes it look easy i don't think it's easy i mean you don't think it's easy look what we're going through but the fact is he wakes up with a smile on his face and he goes to bed with a smile on his face and that brings me peace i pray over my children and i protect my children just like any mom any parent where, you know, I don't want them watching the news. I don't want them seeing what I see. I don't want them seeing that ticker on CNN, global cases versus death, U.S. cases versus death, all that. I don't, that's, I want to protect them from that because, of course, that's, that's one perspective. The fun, I think it's important that, you know, we incorporate fun. You know, we have family date night on Friday. That's something that we instituted a long time ago, and, and we, we let nothing get in the way of that. You know, it's, Six o'clock, it's time for family date night. You know, whether it's playing a board game, Monopoly, whether it's uh, playing Uno, whether it's playing Dose, uh, introducing ourselves or, or just de doing different things. Devotion, you know, having devotion with the kids and making sure that they understand, you know, how we got here. And but just because how we got here is not how we're going to end up. That's, that's very important for my boys to understand that because these are times, believe it or not, that our kids will always remember this. They will always remember this. But what they will remember most is how mom and or dad, or mom and dad, how they handled it and how we came out because they take cues from us. And as long as I'm smiling, and as long as this man is smiling, then all my little men are gonna be smiling and my little women, my grandbabies. And that's very important. And you know, checking on our parents, we both have Parents, we're, fortunate, we're blessed and fortunate enough to have our parents and we talk to them daily. And sometimes we don't, but it gives me great joy to hear my mom laughing and my dad laughing and cracking jokes and my, my mother-in-law being able to tell me what she did today. So again, I don't take that for granted, but you gotta focus on the whole, the big picture. If you start smoke, focusing, on, focusing on smaller elements of those pictures, yeah, that's enough to get you depressed. But we're all in this together. And I always remember that. But again, staying prayed up over your, your, your family, over your businesses, and over the, over the businesses that have not even come to fruition yet. You got to emerge. You got to evolve. You got to reinvent. And in every and each one of those, you got to be intentional. You got to be intentional. And that is, that is something that I practice daily. Daily. I'm not in front of Netflix as much as I like to be. I started taking an online course. I'm like, there's no reason why I can't learn something new. Wow, like that's 50, good. I'm learning something new. You know, like I said, well, I do business coaching. I do mentors, mentoring um, women who are trying to get into business, stocks, how to invest. I got to say, hey, iron sharpens, iron sharpens iron. So I got to make sure that I stay, like you say, stay up on technology. Learn about the new things out there. You know, my thing is I'm looking at stocks. You know, what can I invest in? You know, what can Mel and I talk about? Because he taught me about, he taught me how to do all this stuff. It's good. It's, it's fun. So I find the fun, find the fun in everything. Even in this pandemic, let's find some fun. I told y'all I married up. Yes, sir, you did. <laughs> People think it's me, man. 99.9% .9 I accomplished is because of her. <laughs> She didn't pour into me, didn't teach me, didn't encourage me. And that's what a lot of brothers and a lot of people don't have a good a good partner, a good helpmate. It makes your life different. Okay. So brothers, I'm talking, if you don't have a, a good helpmate out there, then you need to be better. And you brothers, if you do have a good helpmate out there or somebody has potential, then you need to get off your tail and stop being afraid and take the dive, dive in. God has you. But if, if she is praying over you and praying with you, she's a keeper. And when I mean do better, I mean you got to do better yourself. I, I can't challenge my wife to do better if I'm not doing better. So if you feel like she don't believe in you, she don't encourage you, then you need to look at yourself. Why does she not encourage you? Why is she not motivating you? What have you fell short on? What are you not investing in? It's just like pouring seed into the ground. It grows when you put more. We pour into each other. Now it's growing. We're not perfect. We might be perfect for each other. We're not perfect. We argue. She threw a plate at me one time, and I dodged him, and I moved out the way. That's so not true. That's so she not but true. she bust your head with the plate, Mel. Yeah, I moved like that. <laughs> I still got a little quickness with me, too. I ain't, I ain't slow like that. But uh, but yeah, that's what I, I know. I talk to a lot of brothers, man. I understand, and I know if you don't, and we're gonna be honest. Some people don't like their wife. 
some wife don't like their husband. So right now, that's really being elevated. Right, right, and right. Sad. It's really being elevated. And that's right. why he's talking about I just did a show the other week uh, about how uh, domestic violence has increased over the over the past couple of weeks, uh, and it's absolutely just skyrocketed. And so to see a, a husband and a wife and a family uh, get along and uh, love each other uh, despite uh, this craziness that's going on is just heartwarming to me uh, because uh, we we love family and and we need each other. Uh, to make it through this and to, to split up or to or to uh, go through some uh, tragic time uh, uh, with with abuse is is doubling down on what's going on. So uh, I commend you guys for staying together and staying with each other and setting an example uh, for the rest of us uh, to 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 <laughs> to mimic uh, that what you're doing. And so I don't have uh, anyone on my show. Uh, who can't pray. And so I have people on my show uh, that that gives us tips, tools uh, and encouraging word. Uh, but we never end the show uh, without you praying for the people uh, within your expertise or within uh, what you ministered uh, on tonight. And so uh, today I want you to pray for the families uh, who uh, have a business and also who have a, a family and they're juggling both. I want you to pray for those uh, who have to close their businesses. I want you to pray for those who struggling with the decision to open up their business and put the business over the lives uh, that may be at stake. I want you to pray for those wives that are uh, that are that are struggling during this time. Uh, they have a husband that lost their business. And so they're trying to encourage him and keep the family together at the same time. I want you to pray for those who really are struggling right now uh, during this time. And so uh, when we come back from the short break, I want you to begin to pray uh, when the camera comes back to you and encourage the people of God, because this is the time. This is the hour uh, that we need God in our lives, uh, that we need God in our family, that we need God in our businesses. So stay with us. And we be, we'll be back right after this commercial break. Are you suffering from fear and anxiety? The Allen Counseling Clinic is here to help. Our goal is to help you grow from your struggles, heal from your pain, overcome your fears, and get the relief from your anxiety. Call now, area code 424-295-6227. Telehealth is now available. Kid old enough for money but too young to deal with a checking account? Oh, and you don't really want to deal with cash? You need the Cube Kid Card. Reload right from your bank account, set parameters, and spend just like a normal debit card. If the card is lost, no problem. Without the app, the balance is zero. Get yours at cubemoney.io. Consulting is a company that helps people buy and sell insurance agencies. When people want to change careers and get into a new industry, they call me to find an insurance agency to buy. When people want to retire and get out of the insurance agency, they call me to help them liquidate their asset or sell. Some people call me a broker. I'm more of an intermediary. I'm kind of like between a buyer and a seller. I make it fair for both parties. The primary reason somebody would leverage Sam Consulting is because we create millionaires. We help people retire from the business and retire wealthy, or we help people get into the business and grow to be wealthy. The reason I use Sam Consulting is the reputation, professionalism, the expertise, and the amazing job of doing the due diligence is what convinced me to work with Sam Consulting. Owning an insurance agency is one of the biggest kept secrets. It's generational cash flow coming in every month. This is what I do. I create millionaires by walking them through the process, step by step, on how to own their own business. The best way to reach me is go to samconsulting.com or you can simply call the office, 678-223-7397. And we're back. We can, uh, please pray for the people. All right, let's all pray. Go to, go to God in a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you today and we just thank you. We want to thank you for your grace. We want to thank you for your mercy. We want to thank you for all the blessings that you have put over this world, put over our families, put over our communities, put over our state. What most of all, we want to thank you for these times. We know that we celebrate the times that are just great. We're happy and things are going our way. 
But Father God, we also got to celebrate these times too and gain appreciation for what you can do, what the, the miracles that you that you create, the power that you have. And Lord, I don't want to pray over the businesses, the families, those families who are suffering, those families not just for suffering from the loneliness, but also, Lord, suffering from I don't know, what should I do now? Where do I go from here? Lord, give them the spirit of creativity. Give them the spirit, the spirit, Lord, of just doing something new. Give them the spirit of entrepreneurship. Or those people who want to start businesses, Lord, I'm asking you just to give them a spark. Give them things that they never thought that they could even imagine having. Lord, they know, they know your love. They know the power of your word. They know that when you lay your hands on something, it's absolute perfection. So Lord, I want to pray over the wives. I want to pray over the mothers. I want to pray over the time something that we don't have a lot of, but Lord, I pray that everyone is taking advantage of this time and being bigger, being better. And Lord, whatever that looks like in these households, allow that to manifest, allow happiness to manifest, allow being with other, each other to manifest. And Lord, all the faithfulness and faithful believers out there, I'm asking you to please continue to give them blessings and give them the power and the mercy, Lord, and the grace that you would give them. And Lord, the people who are struggling, the people who are struggling to figure out, you know, is this something that you're causing? Is this something bad? Is this something good? The uncertainty. Lord, I'm asking you to erase the uncertainty. Lord, I pray over the frontline people, the people who are who are at this war with this, this, this virus doesn't have a face, but yet it does have a face and one that we don't recognize. Father God, I pray over children. I pray over those who are struggling with learning. I pray over those who, who don't have the resources to learn. But Lord, I pray that you create, you give them the power of wanting to be creative and you give them the power of learning. So Lord, when school does, whenever you say it's okay and you push the button for things to start running back to normal and whatever that looks like, <clears throat> that our children are ready, that they're ready. They're, they're, they're going in with their eyes wide open. Lord, I pray for, for all the mothers and all the fathers who may be struggling to just, just thinking about how they're gonna pay the bills next month, how they're gonna put food on the table. Lord, you are a way maker. You, you are all the above. You are a miracle worker, Lord. I pray that, that all everybody have, have the faith and believe in what you can do and have the power of what you can do. I'm going to pass it over to my husband now. Uh, God, I just pray that every man who is leading the household, I pray for him to have wisdom. I pray for all the fathers to have patience. I also pray for all the parents who are going through the homeschool and to have patience with their families. Have patience with each other. After patience, I need them to believe. God, please have everybody believe. I always teach my my children, I'd rather see a sermon than hear a sermon. I want you to be walking in your faith. God wants us to walk in what we believe. He wants us to have faith. If God said way back 20, 30,000 years before BC to believe, you gotta still believe today. I told a brother today, if he blessed Job through this, he's going to bless me. That means he's going to bless you. That means he's going to give it back tenfold. So whatever you, you lost, God said, I'm going to give it back. I'm going to give it to you more. But you got to believe. You will never accomplish more than you believe. If you don't believe you can have it, God can't give it to you. You got to believe it. You got to believe you can accomplish your dreams. So believe in your wife. Believe in your son. Believe in your daughters. Believe in your business owner. Pray over your business owner that had to lay you off. Pray that he gets back right, because when he's back right, he can bless you. Pray that you'll be a blessing to somebody else. Pray that you have faith, that you have wisdom, and you believe. Ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for your time being on the show. And uh, I know even in this pandemic, you are uh, busy, and uh, I thank you for your time. Please give us how we can uh, stay in contact with you, stay connected with you. Uh, what's your website? Uh, what's your uh, material? I know you have some books out. Talk, talk about that. Uh, we, I created a book line called Creating Millionaires. The first book, volume one, taught you about how to buy and sell insurance agencies. If you don't know about the power of insurance and generational and residual income, you need to study it. Insurance is how people got wealthy. That's how the Rockefellers got wealthy. It wasn't that they created that much money. They invested and when people pass away, which we know we're going to die, you can get 10, 100 fold of your investment. So invest in life insurance or whatever investment you see fit. So that's what the first book was about. The second book, volume two, was about walking your purpose, five steps to success. If not you, then who? If not now, then when? That means for all the people who make excuses, 
who say, I can't do this, I can't do that. I speak supernatural things over my family all the time, over all my sons, all the way from Aaron J, Little Mel, I'll be all that, uh, Chase, <laughs> Caden, <laughs> now down to my granddaughters, my granddaughters. So all, all of them up ahead, you see, I speak faith into them. And I learned from my father, just because your kid is not reaching his goal today, that don't mean he's not reaching it tomorrow. So that book kind of teaches you about how to invest in yourself and how to believe even when you can't see it. And um, Stephanie, I know uh, you were a chapter in the book. Tell us about that. So uh, one of Chase's, my basketball player, my son, who's 15, one of his mentors, uh, Coach Tony Branch in Indiana, he um, approached me about a year and a half or two years ago, and he said, uh, hey, I want you to be a contributing author in a, a project that I'm working in. So I was like, okay. And so he contacted me back in last August of 2019, and he said, okay, it's time to get to work. And I said, well, what is, what is it that, you know, my topic? And he says, uh, tell me your story. And I said, well, that would probably be a screenplay. That would probably be a novel. But he said, no, I need you to give me a chapter. I need you to give me what you got. And so, I, of course, I prayed about it and, and gave it some thought. And I said, you know, if I was to leave the world tomorrow or today, what would I want people to know about me? And I want people to know, you know, the, my, the chapter in my book is called The Eye and Legacy. And, you know, what am I leaving behind? And it's not necessary. It's nothing about money. It's nothing about uh, wealth. It, it's all about what am I leaving behind? What am I teaching my children? You know, being able to pour into others, be able to pray and give others things that don't cost a thing, but go so far away. Because I, so far in life, I had the opportunity to have mentors when I was really young. Um, I was fortunate enough um, to listen and and be able to surround myself and put myself in settings. And, and that has gone, that has carried me all through. So my chapter talks about those things, my, my journey, um, you know, where, where I came from and how I got to where I am today and through my giving and through my, um, what I do as far as in, engaging and investing in people. And so that's what my chapter is about. And this book is called uh, Surviving in the Insane World by Tony Branch. That's excellent. Uh, both of you are, are absolutely awesome. Uh, the definition of a power couple. And so please, uh, Mel, give us the, the website. Your website, uh, is it melclemens.com? Yeah, melclemens.com. You can reach me there, samconsulting.com. Uh, you can buy the books there and hear more about me. And also uh, our foundation, Superheroes Foundation. So those are all ways you can touch base with us. And At any time, yeah. That's excellent. So, so real quickly, uh, Superhero Foundation, give me a, a quick synopsis of the uh, uh, Hero Foundation, because right now, the time, in this time, we need some heroes. So speak to us about that, that foundation. I think we pretty much are uh, keep in mind what we've done as far as creating the baseline. When we talk about that creativity. And if you're thinking about doing something, because what our Superheroes Foundation is about, when we started in 2012, you know, um, we wanted to be a beacon of light for people who wanted to be able to do things like go to college or, you know, maybe be the first in the family to go to college or start a business and might not have the resources. And again, that doesn't really, um, that may not be the, just the financial resources, but where do I start? So Super, Superheroes Foundation, we created that foundation to be that, that buffer, to be the people who help create, to help people evolve and emerge to where they want to be. So in that, we have um, um, scholarships that we actually give away, uh, award uh, graduating seniors every year. We've been doing this since two, 2012. We do it in the states of Georgia and South Carolina and Tennessee, um, South Carolina and Tennessee being where we graduated our high schools. But also you can go to the website because we have our annual uh, scholarship drive every year that kicks off January 1st. This year, um, the deadline is up. It was up April 1st, but we award those scholarships to deserving seniors um, and the application is there. And again, it's posted every year. But we also be able, you know, we're um, business doing business coaching and we have internships. We've actually been able to uh, mentor and have interns in our office where they've gone off and started their own business in insurance and financial organizations and all that. So, you know, when you think it's impossible, probably not that impossible. We just give you the tools to make it possible. That's absolutely wonderful. On that note, guys, um, I thank you for being on the show. Uh, I'm sorry, Mel, you put it on your finger? Yeah, one second. Uh, if you need help, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. 
<laughs> I know people need help, and it's good to give information. But what I learned, it's even better to give resources. That's I'm right. on the board of the Salvation Army. Salvation Army, we're giving out food every day. So go to your local Salvation Army and they go there. If you have a problem, just mention my name. But right now, I know they're giving out groceries. If they run out, go to my foundation. We're able to help people when we can. But I know we're, we're going, giving out giving through the Salvation Army. So groceries, food, they're doing a lot of, also with utilities, they can help different aspects. Go to the Salvation Army. That's absolutely excellent. I used to, uh, I connected with the Salvation Army back at home in Detroit. And I used to minister a lot to all the men and women there uh, back home in Detroit and, and give out food and things like that. So I commend you guys for doing everything you can uh, during this time to give back and put your hand uh, to the plow and uh, uh, go to work uh, in the midst of everything that's going on. So I thank you guys so much for being on the show. You all are absolute jewel. And uh, Stephanie, uh, you absolutely make him look better. And so I thank you. <laughs> thank you guys for being on the show, Mel. Uh, absolutely uh, a phenomenal powerhouse uh, in business also as a father and a husband. I commend you, sir. And so, Thank guys, you. we got to do this again. So please, I'm, I'll call you soon so we can do this again uh, to encourage people. And uh, <laughs> thank you, guys, and God bless you. I'll talk to you real soon. And so, thank guys, God bless you. Guys, listen, uh, you have to uh, watch this uh, over again. Uh, send this to someone uh, because uh, this power couple uh, just just gave us some tips, tools, uh, some resources. Uh, that we can use right now today. And in these times, uh, we need to see families, husband and wife, stay together. Uh, husband and wives uh, jail together uh, to make things work during this time. Not only do they have a successful family, but they have businesses all over the country. And so uh, to manage to manage that and, and to uh, uh, balance that during this time is absolutely uh, nobody but God. And so even even in going through these times, uh, we have people that are praying for you and, and, and are here to give you some encouraging words. So send this feed to someone. Uh, tell them to, to, to watch this uh, if they're in business and they're dealing with the, the balance of family, uh, because I know. Uh, they would get an encouraging word on tonight. And so thank you guys for tuning in. Listen, I will be back on tomorrow uh, with the one and only <laughs> the one and only Bishop uh, Joby Brady uh, all the way from North Dallas, Texas. And so uh, he's going we're going to be talking about uh, leading uh, during a crisis, <laughs> leadership during a crisis. He's an apostle. He's a bishop. Uh, he goes he goes uh, around the world. Uh, teaching leaders all over. And so I want to bring him to tomorrow night uh, to go over some things uh, concerning leadership, because uh, if you're in business, if you if you have a ministry, uh, you're going through a, how to navigate during this tragic time. So listen, till tomorrow, I want you to be safe, stay blessed and uh, listen, call someone and check on them because we need to call them and make sure they're good. Stay safe, stay inside and be blessed. Love you guys. Good night. Are you suffering from fear and anxiety? The Allen Counseling Clinic is here to help. Our goal is to help you grow from your struggles, heal from your pain, overcome your fears, and get the relief from your anxiety. Call now, area code 424-295-6227. Telehealth is now available. Consulting is a company that helps people buy and sell insurance agencies. When people want to change careers and get into a new industry, they call me to find an insurance agency to buy. When people want to retire and get out of the insurance agency, they call me to help them liquidate their assets or sell. Some people call me a broker. I'm more of an intermediary. I'm kind of like between a buyer and a seller. I make it fair for both parties. The primary reason somebody would leverage Sam Consulting is because we create millionaires. We help people retire from the business retire wealthy or we help people get into the business and grow to be wealthy. The reason I use SAM Consulting is the reputation, professionalism, the expertise and the amazing job of doing the due diligence is what convinced me to work with SAM Consulting. Owning an insurance agency is one of the biggest kept secrets. It's generational cash flow coming in every month. This is what I do. I create millionaires by walking through the process step by step on how to own their own business. The best way to reach me is go to SAMConsulting.com or you can simply call the office, 678-223-2222.
7397.